Welcome to iHeartGeek. And welcome to another episode of iHeartGeek. We have <laughs> Moon Knight episode Yay! Yay! The yes. tomb. The tomb. Yes, finally the tomb. Mm. Let's be honest. That's where we're spending ninety percent of our time is the end of this. Yes. Show. Oh my God. I, yeah. This so, episode was so freaking amazing. It was so good. Such a good job on this. Show. It was such a horror. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch this episode. Nope. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. It was. It. This is probably the most mature audience geared, and not like in a dirty, naughty kind of way. Just in like all of scary. the gore and other and scary yeah. stuff yeah. kind of way. So here's yeah. the thing. My daughter watches every Marvel with me with me. She's six years old, and I did have not let her watch the show. And I'm like, oh, this hasn't been that bad. This is okay. <laughs> And, and then, then the tomb showed up. <laughs> of course. And you're like, no, she will not be watching this episode. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have this cut down into, I believe, four scenes this time. That's it. Because there's just... Yeah, there's I, more I than that, to. but there's four big, big yeah. ones. So, scene one is actually happens before the credits. And I want to hit this. I think that um, the first shot with... Uh, with um, we think it's Osiris. It's Osiris. Avatar. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Osiris. Maybe. Osiris. Maybe. We'll, we'll discuss. We'll discuss with him walking upside down holding uh, Conchu. Conchu. Yeah. I mean, it's in the morning. Yeah. yeah. When, with, with that upside down walk, it was so, that shot was just so It was so a great cool. shot. Things are not as they seem. And yeah, there's a walk, lot of disorienting shots throughout yeah. the entire episode, which is cool. And when you look at the end, um, when you when the credits roll, we're not cutting forward, but the first shot you see is I believe it's Big Ben upside down. Mm. Mm-hmm. Doing I don't know that. if that's a lot of inverted thing. shots in the show. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. This episode, there's a lot of things have turned shots. on their head. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Okay, Foreshadowing. Then, so let's hit this. I Everywhere. know that you guys research a whole lot more than me, but let's hit yeah. the gods that we see entombed. Ooh. Now there's some a lot of hints to other gods that we'll cover later, but um, I think that Courtney was the one that saw all the or researched all the gods that we saw. Yeah, I think I have nine of the ten. Now okay, what these are, they? are all because there aren't clear shots, listeners. This is just me speculating on the silhouette and what I think they are. Obviously, we know one is Conchu Doi. One looks like it's Osiris. Now, we have an avatar that claims to be Osiris's avatar. It mm-hmm. also could be it also could be Atom, who's also known as Ra. There's a lot in this episode that points to Ra, so that's very possible because yeah. he's wearing the double crown. Anubis is there. Yep. And these are big uh, names that you yeah. know you could expect to see. Yeah. God, right? Yeah. Yeah. The set, yeah. Ra is Ra is the king of the gods. Yeah, of the like Egyptian the pantheon. Okay. Yeah, he's wow. like the okay. Zeus or the Odin of the Egyptian pantheon. Um, so it's, one is either Osiris or Ra. It's hard to tell because whatever that one is wearing the double crown and they both yeah. wear the double crown. Okay. Um, Anubis, uh, Baset, who is also Bast, the cat god from Pe- oh. Black Panther. Sekhmet is there. Uh, oh. Kefri and Kefri is referenced on the inscription on the scarab that leads them to Amit's tomb, which Tyler will tell you about later. And I'm because he found it. Um, Widget on the heck job and Kotnum, who is a goat god or a ram headed god. Oh, yeah, we saw that. Uh. We saw something with that. Uh huh. That'll in. come. And then Neith. Uh, who is the consort or the wife of Set? Did huh. we see oh. Set in there? No, but I'm okay. missing one. But there I am is missing one. We'll get to it when we get to the tomb. But there are references to Set. There um, are references. I haven't to told y'all all. about that yet. Yes, there are. There are references to every single god I just mentioned and in are, Alexander's tomb. 
we are going to try our best yeah. not to bore you with this, with the minutia yeah, of this, gonna, because mm-hmm. there's a lot. If you want to know more listeners, if you want to know about the Egypt stuff, just hit me up on Facebook or hit me up on That's Twitter, so and I will cool, tell though. you all about it. Yeah, it all listen, it ties in with real mythology. Courtney's a big nerd. Just message her on Facebook, and then she'll tell you. It's great. Giant oh, yeah. nerd. She likes Giant to talk to every. She likes Love people it. so well, much. And you know what's interesting? And tell her what she does wrong on the show first, and then ask her questions. She <laughs> loves that. <laughs> Go ahead, Kevin. Well, you know what's interesting about those names? So I didn't get into the names and everything, but as soon as you started naming them, like those are some like main main gods of, mm-hmm. of Egypt, which yep. uh, gives credence to one of my theories I'm going to get into later. But that's that's huge. I, I didn't even realize that. Now it's these are all based on what I think I can see. When I pause it, yeah, and look really, really close, but I could be wrong because it's not a super clear shot of all. There's some of them I'm sure of. Like I, there definitely that is that is most definitely Anubis up there. That mm-hmm. is most definitely Sekhmet, and it's most definitely Basset. Yeah. The other ones could be something different. So. I mean, going forward, this might be where we see a war of the gods, which will be really interesting, but mm-hmm. I don't know if we're going to get a second season, mm-hmm. so we'll see. Okay, so now let's jump up to scene two, which is, I just titled Getting Shot in the Desert. This has everything from the beginning all the way to their trial, their, their trek into the tomb. So there's a lot yeah. to this. Now, there's two gripes I have, and this, you know, these are... Um, it don't say factual things that don't I worry I will have a factual gripe later so you are not alone this okay, episode good. sir okay here's here's my two problems these guys these these mercenaries that are in the desert shooting people are not pros the first thing you would look at would be inside of any vehicles or anything else yeah. immediately that's the first thing you look at I would kind of a problem with that are they supposed to be pros though I think they are well with that kind of weaponry and then that's my <laughs> other problem I mean problem. I don't know then well, yeah, that's not um, standard issue. Anybody can get stuff. That's I that's. Just, I don't know. I'm just mercenary <laughs> military grade. Okay, my, now my other issue: the when she hit the uh, pulled the flare out and threw it in the box of bullets. That mm-hmm. is movie magic. That doesn't yeah. happen. It, it doesn't happen. It's, like it's a percussion it's, hit. It's a I know. superhero movie. Hey. I know. Ah, hey. and I'm, I'm just saying those are two things that took me out. Did, did really anybody bad. else get get the Jurassic Park vibe when she yes. hit the flare? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I didn't get that, but one thing I noticed is the flare paints her red. Yes, it does. Uh, or oh. or crimson, scarlet. Maybe. Yeah. Or yeah. scarlet, should we say? Yeah, and they yeah. talk about the scarab later. Oh, and there's oh, yeah. I got something for y'all in this. Yeah. It's gonna blow Tyler's mind. I don't know if he caught it or not, so I'm gonna oh, blow I his mind it. later. Did you? Okay, oh, yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> now let's see the um let's see what do I want to hit now. Um two da, 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 da. okay, so let's was the goat. They're walking there, they it's they the escaped ram. the ram. Was it's that black ram? Was it just a ram? Or was that a avatar of a god that's not a human? Well, was, Kahum is... it was very in your face. Oh I'm yeah, saying. there it's definitely referencing something. Um, the research that I got said it could possibly reference Amun Ra in the form of the god I mentioned, the goat-headed god Karnum, mm-hmm. um, because he is a different form of Ra. Mm. And he is mm. most he's he has a black ram, he has a black ram's head, and that's what was sitting up there looking at him. Yeah. It was black ram. So that's something. Uh, the other thing I want to hit. There's a which, lot of raw. Yeah. There's a lot of raw references that run through this entire episode. Raw, raw, re, kick him in the Or, knee. Raw, raw, or was it one of the goats that pulls Thor's ship? Oh, oh. oh, oh. See, there you go. <laughs> there it is. Love it. Love and thunder. Hooman. There's the Hoonan, Hoonan and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot the other name of the other one. But they he can eat that sucker every Nasher. single day and it grow back. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Um, <laughs> when Stevens dispills the beans about he and Mark's deal, uh, Layla is not pleased. I like it when Mark and Steven are arguing with each other. Isn't it great? Like right before, oh, I yes. especially love the line, if you play a hand, if you lay a hand on her, I'm gonna throw us off a cliff. <laughs> the, yes. <laughs> 
which it was so good. Which goes to my other point, um, going back to what we talked about last week. I think we all know that ever all parties involved now know it is cheating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's cheating. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. I mean, that's weird. It's just yeah. I think it's just it's a weird argument confusing. Well, it's, do you love the person or do you love the body? It'd like, be yeah, it's like, like a weird, confusing situation. It'd be like you dating somebody else's twin at this point because they can't remember each other. They're in the same body, but they're different yeah. personalities. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, she definitely. definitely felt guilty. You could see uh-huh. it. That was he, the most awkward kiss I think I've oh, but it was seen so, in so a real Steven awkward, felt a good guilty. Way. Steven felt guilty. You could awkward. see it. That's why he stopped and had to tell him. Had to, yeah, had yeah. to make yeah. sure that this was going to be okay. Yeah. And then the punch. From and then Mark the, yeah, Steven. no, <laughs> or Steven to Mark. I'm no Mark Steven. Yeah, uh, right. that was so, so good. Yeah, yeah, that answers that, that question. Yes, and, it's cheating. <laughs> and I will, I will. We were say, all wondering. <laughs> I did I say the line, but didn't he got a little cheeky there in that whole scene? It was a, a little, little bit. Yeah, it was I a little say, bit but, the saucy yeah. area. It was Archer era. It was it's definitely in the was Archer it? range. No. Yeah, yeah. Archer's oh, way it, worse. phrasing, way phrasing. Worse. Okay, I'll give phrasing. you phrasing. <laughs> yeah. I'll, give you, I'll give you phrasing. And if you guys didn't catch it, it's the part when they're about to it's belay kind down. of obvious. So, the I'm hooking, just in case hooking of the gear it. and then something she says. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that was a thing. Okay. Um, oh, one thing I loved about this too, because it, it's comedy and it's, it's everything else, but there is foreshadowing here for what they're about ready to see because there was blood on the ground. There was, oh yeah, the was, instrument in the tent. The modification yeah. tool. Like, yeah. What is that? And as they as they continue on, but I love. I always love foreshadowing any kind of shows and movies. Like my brain starts starts yeah. trying to go down the trails, and I was I was a really cool foreshadowing to see a little specs. Now this this is my big catch that nobody online anyway that I've seen seems to be talking about, mm-hmm. and that's when you see the the mummification tool and there's blood on the in the camp outside. That was not the sorcerer that was doing the mummification. I'm guessing that's Haro. No, so, it was the Hecka priest who did it. Outside of the tomb. That's what I, I was wondering. Outside? Was. Yeah. I don't think it outside. was. I'm sure it was. I'm I, sure it I, was. I, I, am, I am actually willing to bet it's no. not. I, w- I will actually do okay. one more online okay. bets. I okay. think it was. It may not be Haro, but if it is, that raises a lot of questions we haven't asked. But, I mean, how many Hecka priests do you think that were down there just the one? Oh no way son oh, no. there was three there were yeah there were more than that there was more than one but i don't one got the, squished and then we saw another well, one i think the curse ends more. at the tomb i don't think they could go so, outside of the tomb i don't think there's a curse so so to dub's point that's kind of whenever i saw the blood that was the foreshadowing in my mind was did they have to sacrifice somebody for that tomb to open or or something something along in that sense. So one thing I will say that might go along with your thought that Haro was doing it that might lead back to later to later on when he's mm-hmm. we see him we'll as the doctor minutes, yeah. is that tool is also actually used to shove up the dead body's nose and swirl it around and pull the brain out because well, they don't it, care they didn't care about the, the brain. Season. Yeah, they didn't they didn't care about the brain. I have so three. they used to cut it up and so you know since he's a a doctor in an asylum I, i'll give you that i'll throw that out there as a bone for you so no i i do think it is a i think it's something and i don't think we're looking at it close enough um i figured somebody had to me. get sacrificed like kevin has said maybe that that's a possibility and maybe haro is something different than what he what we believe him to be i got like, i got thoughts Okay, fire away. <laughs> well, I got I got thoughts that I want to talk later about. Uh, uh, you thinking maybe hearkening back to his comic origins when he was a doctor experimenting on people for pain and all that. Yeah, that That's could what be. He did in the comics. Um, it could be because he's Mephisto. No, I'm just kidding. That is it. Oh, only, that's exactly what it was. That is an actual <laughs> internet rumor going around right now. That's he's what the goat was. The ghost. The goat was Mephisto. Yeah. I'll, no, I'd buy that. that yeah, I will buy. This again. <laughs> no, we're just, we're just yanking your chain, Kevin. Oh, you see, on the wall or, inside. Or are we? Oh. <laughs> okay, is there anything else we need to hit in this scene before we go into the tomb? Nope. No, okay. Oh, it, oh, oh one quick scene. 
Um, this leads not going to, backwards anymore. This so leads yeah. to the Scarlet Scarab thoughts. Um, if you look at Layla's clothes in that in this scene, in the whole Tomb Raider scene, they mimic the exoskeleton of a scarab beetle. Oh, nice. Mm. Oh, cool. Well, and, and there, there's more we're gonna hit on Layla too. in a few minutes. So there you go. Okay, so scene three in the tomb. In the tomb, the, the graceful entrance. Tomb. Oh, he falls into the mummification. That was kind of good. Yeah, and you you definitely realize very quickly how much of a dork Steven is. Super mm-hmm. dork. Yeah. He's a cinnamon. Now he let me him. now let me say I think I think now would be a good time to say I'm warming up to him. You know, he's a cinnamon roll. I like, like him now. We oh, were like we got to punch this guy in the throat or something. So, <laughs> yeah. Not well, I still feel that way. Himself well, yeah, but right. now, you know, now I'm, just, I'm really warming up to the guy. Well, what he's doing now is now his life has clarity. Now he doesn't feel like he's actually like actually crazy where he's waking up and he actually understands it now. I think there's a little bit of closure in that. So he can now use his talents and his talents yeah. is to figure things out. Yep. So yeah. all his knowledge well, and expertise. He's a cute play. little cinnamon roll. Yeah, it is what is brings him to the brings him to the party. Mm-hmm. But so so straight up, this is when it becomes a straight up horror. I'm not a horror fan, so I was edge of my seat the first time I watched it. I didn't, you know, and it even gave me jump scares. It gave me double jump scares. <sighs> okay, well, oh, you know what? Good. Hit that. Uh, you have a theory on the I'm sorcerer. Tell, I'm telling you, he's probably using like echo location. I know yeah. his tongue is missing. Well, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Mummica- when, you, when you mummify somebody, you but cut their tongue it's out. It's dark in there. When nobody's in there, it's dark. He's yeah. using echo location. Why can't it be both? Dark. It is. Why can't it be both? He has to use echo location because they cut his tongue out to mummify him. I think but we can both. So, right. so yeah. creepy. So I do want to say the first time you see yeah. him, before he does the weird spider walk and all that, he is terrifying just straight oh. up. Oh yeah. yeah. And the first and when you watch it, I I couldn't have been the only one that thought, is that Haro? Oh, oh no. Gosh. That I was knew, my first I knew, thought. I knew it was. I knew it was going to be something gross. It was because well, we're this, in a we're in a mummification chamber. You know that's where yeah. they do the mummifications. This whole and I'm just like was was like a cross between Tomb Raider, Indiana Jones, and like a mummy horror, like yeah, like the old like mummy horror show. It was just brilliantly done. Like, which is was, something I want to hit with this when she hides. If you've played any video yeah. game, especially oh, like yeah. uh, Tomb Raider. Or the Batman stuff, whenever you go into stealth mode. That's very know, cool. Or Fable or anything. That's what Layla was. And I thought it was, I thought they overplayed their hand a little bit on it. I, it was it was entertaining. It was cute. Maybe. They did it once with the with the truck and then they did it again. And I'm like, ah, you should have only done like one or the other. Because it was, I think they overplayed their hand a little bit. Just me being critical on it. A lot of that, a lot of this in the show is, it seems like it's a little bit over the top but not it just gets to that line you know with the with just even the little details like that and that yeah. may that may mm-hmm. kind of help uh, a theory i have later on okay fair enough i agree with i can't wait okay <laughs> i know what the theory is <laughs> I, is, is it in the section or is it in the next one no, no it's it's, it's gonna on. be yeah okay yeah. okay um so i think the use of alexander the great as a reveal was brilliant Okay, I have a couple things. Okay, I know I know what your thought on this is, but I want to say this first. Every single person that watches this watches this show, no matter how old you are, knows Alexander the Great. And it's it's definitely a moment that you can it's a relation moment. Because Mm -hmm. you're not gonna know Hotep Ra, you're not gonna know a million of these, you're gonna know Alexander the Great. Right. Well, isn't that what that's my thought on it? Huh? Isn't that what made Indiana Jones uh, movies fun? Is it was something everyone knows. Yeah, everybody mm. knows it, and so it's like, oh, there it is, and and that's what I think made this scene so great. The so great, I, best scene of the whole show, I think. I, I, yeah. I the best, yeah, of the not of not of this episode mm-hmm. of the show. That moment mm-hmm. was kind of amazing, and the excitement, Just the discovery, that and the, yeah, the, yeah. the Steven's yeah. excitement um, and everything. I don't know, maybe I'm Steven sold it. A hundred, you know how Steven how well he's selling it and everything. Yeah. <laughs> So a couple of things. Um, the face on the sarcophagus that? is is based exactly on what we think Alexander the Great looked like. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so okay, they we did have a use... found the sinking thing. <laughs> That's the other thing. It is yeah. missing. It is, yeah. it is legitimately missing. No one has ever found it. Um, I have two little gripes and this is just me being a massive, massive nerd. <laughs> um, first off, when he walks in, the, Stephen walks in and he says, could be Tatmos too, or it could be Nefertiti. Okay, first off, he says it was a pharaoh. Nefertiti was never a pharaoh, <laughs> oh. ever. Her Ooh. husband was, and she's believed to be the mother of the most famous pharaoh that we know of, but we don't know if that's true. So that irritated me. And the other thing that just made me crazy is there is no way that one man can push Should the lid on yeah. a sarcophagus yeah. that had to weigh himself. Yeah. That had to weigh at least a, a minimum of a ton. That was solid and gold. gold. So yeah. Most of the time, there are two or three layers in yes. a sarcophagus before you get to the mummy. It's like a Russian like- doll. King Tut had nine. So that's just my little gripe. That's just my nerdiness. And so, you know- but it, you know what? It plays into Tyler's. Movie props. Idea stuff, later. So. Come on. You gotta make it work. Well, I'm gonna let it go because it was it so is, rad. But it I'm is like, a Marvel do movie. That by himself. Don't let facts so, get in the way. So wait a second. <laughs> That's what messed your suspense of disbelief up? You, you can say that over and That's over again. Right for that. I've been waiting for that. I did, I did honestly go, he couldn't do that by himself. Oh, there's no way. Yeah. But I'm like, okay. maybe if he was wearing the Moon Knight okay. suit, maybe Zombie Sorcerer is okay. Moment, <laughs> maybe it's like okay i'll let it go because it's cool <laughs> okay so now let's get harrow finds and they find the boom 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 yeah um actually before we get to that let's let's uh, talk uh, yeah before we get to that I pretty significant scene i mean yeah let's talk about the um the burial chamber with the snakes um that that's a i believe that set set is i believe a snake god the burial chamber in the burial chamber and where the sarcophagus was? Yes, but no, 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 not where the sarcophagus was. The tomb was when, or the yeah, mummification room? In the mummification room when they went oh, and hopped, okay. which he went and hid. Okay. And all the snake stuff in there. Oh, I believe yeah. that was supposed to be a thing of, of set, and that's the only thing that I really. Widget, grab is, on. A, widget is a snake headed goddess. Okay. So I thought it was cool. Well, he, he said it represented like yeah. uh, self regeneration. Self regeneration. Well, yeah. I mean, the other thing is, is it. He said snake skin, but it could also be crocodile skin because I it mean, like skin. Amid is croc is a crocodile. I mean, it's a reptilian thing. So fair I, enough. I don't know. There's just an arm laying there, and that's gross. Okay, so what else you guys <laughs> want to hit on this before we get to Hero showing up? Um, well, I mean well, that, that scene. Yeah, yeah, that scene, and then the scene where where Layla fights off the the heck of priest and. And hey, Tyler, why don't you tell us what a heck of priest is? Um, it's heck of cool, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, are you coming with the dad jokes today, Doug? I am. Every day. That was my job. Comes with the, every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, um, no, I was just kind of looking looking around, and I did come across that, like, um, at least in, I found, you could probably enlighten us, Courtney, in, within real mythology, but uh, in Marvel, heck of nut was a sorcerer that actually had um a lot of dealings with um amon Ra. so i found that kind of interesting you know keeping with all everything that we're doing here in Mm -hmm. in uh the fourth installment of our mcu you know all the sorcery all the magic and stuff you know they're really keeping with all of that and in the to piggyback on that in the original uh, in the original egyptian um, Heka priest Heka was the personification of one element of Amun Ra, the element of his magic. Mm. And so Heka priests worshipped the magic, and they worked for doctors and healers. Very interesting. It's a group effort. This is cool. Yeah, a little bit make it bring we'll, stuff together. We'll make it make sense one way or the other. You know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we will. Heck yeah, we will. I'll make that square fit in the circle. I don't care. <laughs> hey, it all connects. It all connects. Okay, so let's let's move on to the hero now, who is even more annoying uh, when speaking because he's just so measured and calm when there's gunshots going on. And there's I think it's that are gonna supposed kill. to foreshadow to where he ends up as at the end of the episode. Yeah, 
Because yeah. he says a couple of things. Like he says to her, I hope you find closure, which is literally something that the what he is the role he's given at the end. Yeah. Would say. And then he also says he also yells, wake up. Yeah. Oh really yeah. loudly. But we don't know who interesting. he's talking to. Is you he know, talking to Layla? You know is he talking to the Hmm. Well, you know what's interesting about Hero is he's like he is like a doctor. Like he's very measured and he believes that he's right. Mm-hmm. You know, he, his whole his whole ordeal is I'm just trying to heal the world. I'm trying to this is just what you I'm doing. Just bought him a coke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah. you know, and that's Coke's just teaching the world to sing. Scary. Like they've taken M- Marvel. It's over in the past in the MCU. They they haven't really done it, a great job with all their villains. And they have they've taken this villain that barely anybody knows, and in four episodes have made me so enthralled with them, and it's because of scenes just like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So measuring, he's threatening and everything else, but he's so measured and calm while he's doing it. And it's it. annoying. Yes, yes he is. <laughs> now, okay, so I have a question, and let's very quickly answer this one real quick. Um, so when Haro was giving the whole dissertation of what happened to her father is it because he actually read the mind or was he there was he the other guy bushman's the other guy okay so well, that, that, that's no fun yeah i don't think he was there <laughs> i mean he that's just that's him. just literally what it is in the comics is that the bush Bushman yeah, that's is what the one like, but they're them. taking liberties everywhere yeah i mean they're taking yeah. liberties i think harrow just knows because i mean stop and think about harrow knows everything yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Fed but he place. also, we 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 mentioned before the Haro doesn't lie, and he never said that Mark killed the father. He said, <laughs> "What what does your heart tell you?" To make well, he said he was there, and I mean, he says Mark says my partner got greedy, and we know those of us in the comics know that there there was actually another person there, it was Bushman, who's the one that killed him, but. Um, I've seen speculation that that from people on the internet that he means his partner Jake. Okay, but Mark doesn't know about Jake, or we we don't know. If we Mark don't know. We Jake don't doesn't technically exist know yet. about Jake. We don't technically know about Jake. So they're gonna wait till the end. That's okay. just random. <laughs> so let's move on to the ultimate Easter egg world. We'll call that in scene four. Okay, so for this scene, I'm going to let everybody just go kind of crazy. There's so much. Because stuff. there's so much crap. <laughs> this is so like, much. This is like every Easter egg and then x lax just went through and just boom, <laughs> everywhere. It's wow. everywhere. Wow. Only wow. Like, just all over. Yeah. The place. It's everywhere. <laughs> okay, so I want to throw my one theory out and then I'll let you guys just do whatever you want to do on this. Okay, so. My question is, A, is is he dead because uh, they don't have Kanju there to ri- raise them up from the dead? So is Mark Steven actually dead? And two, I have this theory. I think that Jake actually has taken over. In the first or second episode, I don't remember which, which one it was, he talked about how they used to be able to, it was second episode, how they used to be able to, wall themselves off a lot better but now he can't for some reason so i'm wondering if that's the walling off and jake has taken over and he's actually doing the thing right now and if they would have buy that if there wasn't a third sarcophagus no no but that's why i that's that's where my third part comes in with the third sarcophagus when they open it if they would have opened it they would have met jake and then the the i think the walls would have been torn down and then they would have just all come back in that's just that's my that's my theory. Throwing probably wrong. at the wall. <laughs> but I, I if that it makes sense to me. No, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I mean. Okay. This whole this whole episode is throwing Sketty at the wall. So. Oh, yeah. this is okay. So go ahead and start with uh, what did you guys see, and don't give us the hippo until the end. So uh, let's <laughs> start with <laughs> you. Just Boiler. gave the hippo away. Not everybody knows the hippo's there. <laughs> Yeah, she but that's how we the know the internet. show's over. Uh, <laughs> she broke the internet. <laughs> let, oh my gosh! Let's start oh. with Tyler. What what kind of cool things did you see on this? It's like, uh, um, you know, I mean, there's just so much, and I'm sure we we all picked out pretty much everything. Um, I just I just really like how 
you know, every single episode was referenced in this. We saw something from everything. We saw yep. Donna from the museum sitting there with a stuffed scarab from the first episode. You know, um, we even got my boy Sarcophagus in the fishbowl. Um, he's chilling over there. So yeah, bad. that's right. That's Keep so shaking bad. your head. So got... bad. That's horrible. <laughs> um, jokes. You know, I mean, just so many little things from, you know, all the different characters that we saw. It, it was just ridiculous. And mm-hmm. I, I know that what they were going for, they're doing the, was it all in his head the whole time? Well, you was that it all was a dream? Strong. Yeah. You know? It's not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not. But, I mean, that's they want you to kind of think that. And, I mean, I you it can be broken down in so many different ways. There's just so much that happened here mm-hmm. and that didn't happen here that we're trying to piece together. Yeah. And it was just wild. I'll let y'all go ahead. So, Kevin, what blew your mind? So, there's a couple couple things. Um, one, so I after after well, I'll talk about that afterwards, about the after the episode and kind of like thoughts and emotions about it. But there were some things that I just did not understand, and I and I would uh, love. There was a lot of symbolism, obviously, and just like Tyler said, is you can piece the whole show through those last couple of scenes, and it was just really beautifully done. But the part where Layla, where she says, oh, I'll let you keep part of this this one time. Or what? she says something. And that's mm, it. And that I, was, okay, yeah. That, I didn't that bothered me. That. Yeah, I didn't understand what's I'll going on. I'll share it with you. There. I'll share, I'll share it with, it with you this time, time, I promise. I promise. Is it subconscious? Or is was that her dad that was trying, oh. Was that her dad that was trying to get greedy? And then Jake shot her? Uh, was that you know what I mean, like a symbolism, or I just didn't understand that part? Mm-hmm. Does anybody have anything? I've been wondering about it for a couple of days now. I've got nothing on the line. I've got lots of other stuff, but I have no interpretation for that line. Yeah. I don't. Maybe, I, I, they I'm, found the I'm, scarab. I'm, she ran off with it. You know, like she stole something from him. Yeah. There's no way she did not. Yeah, and that's why she lets Mark get away with what she lets him get away with because they have that they both betrayed each other. So therefore. There's a lot more room to get possibly. away with. Possibly, yeah, very yeah. possible. Any, anything else before we go to Courtney? We there's, just like sit back and just. I got a list. The there's starter. a lot. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a. Ton. There's just so much. All right. But yeah, but Courtney, go okay. ahead. I'd love to hear it. Okay, so there's two little things that I'll say that I think other people missed. Okay, so Crowley is calling the bingo. Mm-hmm. That's yep. Crowley. Um, the gold, one the of the golden characters statue is guy, playing. Who didn't know. Yeah, the golden statue guy who is who is in the comics, a confidant of Jake. Um, somebody's playing the Rubik's cube, which is what Steven does in the first episode to stay mm-hmm. awake. Billy and Bobby are the orderlies, but we called that way before. You called that. I'll, um, give, that. I'll give that one to you. You did. Okay. That okay. The mm-hmm. clock behind Donna. The hands are Conchu's staff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Beck, the guy who's playing the, the guy, the guy who's pushing the cupcake cart, his name is Beck. He actually owned the cupcake van in the first oh. episode. So that's where that ties in. Did he own the, the drawing? Was, was that that wasn't his uh horror or midnight man, his security guy? What no, his name no, he's in there though. That guy's in there though. But the cupcakes ro- shoot go back to the cupcake van. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the cupcake, the picture definitely. of Monrovia. I haven't gotten there yet, but it's okay. <laughs> and it's I and it's Latvira. I know. I'm just throwing it away. Just, um, just the drawing, it, yeah. the one the old one it makes is a, a drawing of Conchu, but everybody knows that. Um okay, Layla is eating Turkish delight as she's putting it's a marshmallow. You know what I mean. But she's putting the <laughs> postcards up that were part of yeah. you know, that we saw before. Um and Steven is chained or shackled to the Wheelchair. Our Mark is shackled to the wheelchair like Stephen was chained to the bed um, with the Moon Knight doll in his head. Now, here are the two tiny little things that I caught that I was, I'm curious if everybody else caught. Layla is wearing a bandage on her finger and there there's you. red marks on it. And what is it, Tyler? It's a scarab. A scarlet it is. scarab. It is. She has a scarlet scarab on her bandage. Um, the other I just thing wanted, is... I just wanted to come true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
The other well, her dad thing called is, her scare, uh, scare my little scare. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's all so kinds of little things yeah. pointing that, to that she's going to end up being this probably scare. But that's just it doubles down every single episode. Mm-hmm. The other thing, and you have to be paying attention or watching with the captions on Crowley when he's calling Bingo, he calls T sixteen. There's no T in Bingo. But T16 refers to truth serum that's used in oh. the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Ooh. Nice. Uh, I have to throw out one more thing, one more catch that I found. Did you, anybody notice how his jaw looked when he was all just out of his mind? He was sedated. He was sedated? Okay. So anybody else notice his jaw looked sedated. exactly yeah. the same as when his jaw was broken in the first episode? Well, that's the really? thing is like in the comic books the orderlies beat the snot out of him all the time. So I just assume that they beat him up before they brought him into Harold's Oh, office. probably. But he, I mean, his job. But we just didn't up. see it. Yeah, we just didn't see In it. In reference to that's what it was. the comics also, I think, I'm starting to think that, um, or I do think, Haru is taking the place of Emmett, who turns out to be Amit. Amit, um, yeah. Amit in the comics uh mm-hmm. emmett being the doctor in the insane asylum in the comic mm-hmm. turns out to be on it so now there's, i think i think they traded that for Haro. i kind of agree with tyler on that now there's more stuff in his office in the doctor's office but i'll wait till we get there i'll wait till we get there go ahead <laughs> uh, you, 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 okay. you got the show you got, um, you got you got you have the helm there's four canopic jars yep. in there mm-hmm. um and that's where they put the liver the stomach and other pieces of body when they mummify people, which is a weird thing to have in a doctor's office. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. There's the Bavarian doctor by now, I hope. There's the Bavarian, there's the Bavarian (laughs) landscape, which we're debating whether it's Latvia or not. It's not. Um, There's a glass, there's a glass pyramid on his desk. Mm -hmm. Um, There is a statue of Amit's head in it. And then the other thing is, is there's a goat god who is Kanum statue on his desk too. One other thing that didn't, I can't believe no one else noticed. Did anybody look at the, uh, in the movie when they had the lunar god, the Aztec lunar god? How many faces did he have? How many faces? Four. There were three faces. Is it? I thought it was four. There were three faces inside of it. So I thought that, that was... works into <clears throat> Tyler's theory. Yeah. He'll tell you about later. Okay, Tyler, tell you us know, your theory because it's by bothering me now. Tell wait, me. we've got to get. Do we have to get the hippo? Get to the hippo first. Well, and yeah, then... we got to get to all the okay. hippo stuff. Dude. Hippo. Um... No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Go. So then there's the hallways with the four, the the three sarcophagi. Yeah. Yeah. So. So my thought, my thoughts there is that that is going to be Jake, but they haven't met him yet. And so, like, would yeah. you open a sarcophagus if you haven't met him? And he's not making yeah, a he, sound, so they can't hear. Yeah, his that's voice. the thing is, is there's no sound like we yeah, could with just, when Stephen was pounding. Mm-hmm. And so it's like I know Stephen's in there, so I'm going to open it. But that and, does go um, with my theory. And it's and it's this whole thing with that that sarcophagus. It's 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 a. It's like it's like still locked away. They don't know him yet, you know. And yeah, yeah. I was wondering and, if they were going to open him, and then all of a sudden, they were, the whole thing was going to come crashing down. Is he, almost, but. he locked away because they don't know him yet, or is he locked away because Mark? Put well, him? because well, Stephen was locked away the same way. Oh, he was, was laying down. Yeah, but they know about each other, though. Mark and Stephen yeah. know about each other. So, he, in in what Kevin was saying, they don't know about Jake yet. Yeah. So they maybe that's he didn't why they didn't either. open it. Yeah, well, but you yeah, can but they hear him. They haven't met him yet. They've met yeah. everybody else, and in everybody in that show, in that that part, everybody that was in there was in reference to something that's happened before. They've never mm-hmm. seen him. So mm-hmm. how could they show him in his mind? Yeah, I think mm-hmm. anything here is so speculative. And why? Oh, yeah. Why was he standing up? Stephen was down. It was laying what's, down. What's that symbol? Because you know, he's standing he's up. Stand up guy. But Mark's fighting right now. Yeah. Well, and the I'm not, I like I'm the not funerary. Let this guy. Yeah. The Egyptian. <laughs> right, uh, hold on to this whole episode is throwing Skeddy at the yeah, wall. Yeah, so yeah, just <laughs> hold on to it. Take it. <laughs> I have no problems with shooting out forty-five million different theories we have because I think that's right. where we're at One right now. Oh, One yeah. of them's gonna be good. So yeah, okay. and then. Then the hippo. We run down the hallway. There's 
Did you guys notice the lamps? Oh yeah, the inception tilt to the yeah. Yeah, there. but did you notice that the lamps are ancient Egyptian funeral urns? There was so also, they don't go with the rest they of funny. the yeah they don't go with the rest of the decor of the no, they don't asylum. <laughs> yeah, there was well, also was in the room. Oh, oh, go ahead. No, it's interesting when you say that because I didn't I didn't notice the urns like per se, but I did notice as he was running down the hall, things seemed more pyramidy. If that makes sense, like mm -hmm. the, the way the lighting started changing, the way. And then all of a sudden, when we see the symbol, it kind of brings credence to what I'm kind of thinking is going on. But, you you know, all of a sudden you come there. And now it's actually almost like he's pulling himself out of it or he's being pulled out of it at that point. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Now, there was three things in that room on the shelf. Um, I don't think it means anything, but there was a clock, a cup, and something else. I don't know what the other yeah, one I was. Yeah, I couldn't figure out what it, I couldn't figure out what they were. And I, I know mm -mm. every single thing in this has meaning. So I'm trying to like All right. suck the marrow out. And I, yeah, ah! I, I I just finished my rewatch, like right before we did it. And I, I couldn't figure out what it was. So, okay. And so let's talk about the hippo for a second. And that moment was incredible. That was because, awesome. I mean, it's, it's, it's horrifying and it's awful. And you're just looking for stuff. And then I think she's Hi! amazing. Yeah. I think she's amazing. <laughs> and that voice is just like, everything's Wonderful. okay now. I'm yeah. happy. Yep. It's perfect. It's it could have been such a downer ending, but that right there, we're like, oh, there you I are. Also like, oh, I really <laughs> enjoyed the fact that Steven screams like a girl <laughs> when he's scared. You have Mark like touching yeah, you, know, you got Steven going, ah, like me in a horror film. Ah! <laughs> No, but they, they do that so well uh, throughout this show. Just the, mm -hmm. the vibe they put out, you know, if it's creepy, if it's intense and you're fighting, or if it's like a lovey-dovey kind of vibe, you know, whatever they do, it's it's perfectly balanced throughout. Mm -hmm. You know, right right when it's been twisted and dark, and my yes. God, what's going on? And then, yes. you know, it's perfect. It made it, mm -hmm. all, it, made it all better. Now, mm -hmm. it was like it, the, it, it's the world's greatest Band-Aid right there, and it was weird. <laughs> it was. Now, who is the hippo guy? Well, Why don't you tell us? You researched it. No, no, no. You're you're the Egyptian nut over there. Hippopotami. <laughs> I will say, I will say that after this part, I have a couple of friends from work that have been watching this show, and so like every time they come in, all of them were like, "What the heck was that last <laughs> part? I don't understand." <laughs> it, it was so funny from the other side of people that like don't know. And I now I have a theory on the hippo that it's the it's the girl. The girl avatar. Um, and I'm gonna let Courtney take that because she's better. I at thought that. it was at first. I thought it was at first. Yeah, but like it's just so funny and listening to people that aren't kind of following along and they're like, "What?" So okay, so Courtney tells who it is. Tyler tells your theory, and then we got one more thing that I want to talk about, and then we'll wrap it. Uh, she's Tahuaret. She is the hippo goddess who is a protector. And a guardian, and she's a a mother type goddess and a goddess of fertility, and she helps fairy souls through the underworld. Okay, so that's so I got, and then yeah, she's a helpful goddess. So she, I think she'll be, yeah, she'll be an ally for our our messed up, minded poor little superhero. Now I'm okay. kind of interested in seeing what Kevin has. Sake. he's been he's been harping he's been on patient. something this, this last couple of days okay so my my thought is that so it's either one of two things i've kind of been back and forth back and forth with him either one is that right now he is actually being almost essentially hollowed out or something like that if you're trying to give his body to emit to be the avatar They've yeah. gotten rid of Kanchu. Now they've broken him down. They're trying to break him down even more. And that's what this whole thing was, is as Haro is basically trying to say, hey, um, get ready. Just give into it, you know? And that's what all this is, is them trying to, like, get Amit to be the Avatar or him to be Amit's Avatar. And then, so I think that's what's going on. But I, I kind of believe that that Hippo goddess is, is the same. Now, am I correct? Her Avatar was that girl that we met 
in no. the temple, right? Oh, it wasn't. No. That's no. Okay. That's that was my first thought. That whole theory yeah, that's that's Hathor. Hathor is the cow-headed goddess. So if she Tahor buries... Tahoret is solely is all hippo. There's there's no female to her, but she does walk. She is bipedal. Well, so she, she has a great. She was not people. in that the circle. If she no, buries she's people not to the underworld. Then maybe he is actually dying. Yeah, you know? maybe it could be. Yeah, and, yeah. And so no, what, they're they're different goddesses. That's one, and that's what, kind of one of the versions of. Uh, yeah, I have a couple theories on how this is like kind of playing out at the end here, and um, you know, one of them was that he it's, he just fell into some sort of purgatory, and you know, we're, she's going to be a helper in some way and kind of guide them to uh, meet somebody who's significant enough to enact whatever plan it is to release Conchu. Um, and then we get our Ghostbusters scene with all the other gods and stuff that'll probably be released at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the question of like, well, if he's in there, how's he going to get out? Like that was, that was kind of like the main question for me. Um, not so much what's next in like the next episode, but how's he getting out of here? And, and uh, digging around, I, I got a couple different things. So, do the good one. Do the good one. <laughs> do the good one. <laughs> so the one that's that's kind of crippling Courtney over here hey, no. is, is that a few details popped up in the last day of digging that got me thinking. Okay, are we watching what we think we're watching? Because in the comics. Steven was a producer of a TV show about movies. Um, yeah, he's a movie producer. And Mark was the actor. And, and Mark we, played Moon Knight. Played Moon Knight. And we got a couple, and like I said, it's lending to how you said it's a little over the top, the way she acts out and stuff. There's been a lot of that. And we got a couple little things in episode three. There's what looks to be some sort of green screen left on the ground when they're having the rooftop fight. And I mean bright green, like in yeah. the corner, you can't miss it. When you really look for it, it's it's there. And then also, there's an alley chase during that episode. And I'll just, be so pissed off if you're right. And just this week, <laughs> uh, some some people on Twitter had spotted that you literally see as they're running down the alleyway, you see a cameraman come oh into God. frame, holding a legit modern camera like you would film a TV show. With. And I've we looked at it earlier and. Sure enough, it, it's there. She rewatched the scene in full speed, yeah. and dude's there. It's and it looks pretty, pretty obvious. It looks intentional. Like I know there have yeah. been some guffs. We've we've had some things where jeans jeans guy came in the Mandalorian and stuff. Yeah. But this this given the comic book background, it looks like they might be playing with that. It's just you know we're throwing you know, speculation. It's very intentional. I mean, wow. it looks very intentional. But and the way the guy the way on. the guy enters the screen because Tyler told me about it and I went back and rewatched it and I watched it in slow mo and I watched it in full speed. When you're not when you're not slowing it down, it's really obvious that he comes into the shot and comes out of the shot, and the way that he's positioned, if it was accidental. It would make sense because in that scene, we would have had different cuts yeah. from that camera position. It's all one big shot. So there are no additional cuts yeah. in there. Like they had so there's no reason. Falling. There would be no reason to have somebody there so, to do the shot. You know, if they are we watching a production it, so. of Moon Knight while we're watching a production I, of Moon Knight? That will make a lot of sense. And I will be so pissed off <laughs> if that's right. It, oh, it, it, it's I not the ending. Right I, it's not the ending I want. <laughs> but no, there's some validity yeah, to, to the speculation. It, it really you know? is. And when he told me about it, I was like, "I'm." If I'm it wasn't little, for the okay, cameraman and the, the, what looks like it could be a green screen crumpled up in the background on the ground, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to rewatch the whole series this week. I mean, yeah. Yeah. episode and I mean, three is where you find. I'm a little bit broken right now, and we could be wrong. It would be wild. And it'd be the craziest twist Marvel's ever thrown at us. Exactly. And I mean, and we I could be completely wrong. Well, we've all heard this is only so. going to be one season. 
Well, and the thing is, is all the Twitter speculation about the cameraman is that it was accidental, is accidental. And it does happen. But we also have to remember that Marvel is so meticulous about not messing up like that, that they go in and they digitally erase people and erase things from their trailers so they don't give things away. So I find it very hard to believe that they would have missed this very obvious cameraman right. in the middle of this scene. So, okay. so there's okay. there's that or there's the illusion part where in the comics, this is also kind of a reference thing. Taylor, you where, broke them both. I, where, no, I, I don't have want that to say. <laughs> I, I didn't I'm say it was a great ending. I, I hate you for coming up with this. Oh, no. <laughs> I do. Brilliant. Oh, I, I think our friendship is, is on is on shaky ground right now. <laughs> well, maybe, so I can, good. maybe I can help with, with my other theory real quick. It's just... Do it quick, because we're done. That, you know, this, <laughs> oh. this stuff was taking place, but then when where we're at now is it is an illusion being, being put forth, and it was so in the comics. And at some point, um, Anubis helps Mark get out and guides them back. They meet up with Anubis, I think, in the sewer or something like that when they sewer, escape. Yeah, under, now, underneath. who could help them escape? The hippo goddess, maybe? Um, she may be taking the place of Anubis. They could take him to Anubis. Anubis could help him get back out, free Conchu, all that. So this whole thing is just oh. an illusion, you know? Okay. Okay, with that, I'm ending the show. We're done. We're done. There's nothing more I want to talk about. We're done talking. I don't. I don't know if there'll be another iHeart Geek episode after this. I'm broken. Tyler, you broke them. I'm done. Oh. Hey, Check out the website www.iheartgeekshow.com. Use Tom. We paid extra for it. I'm so glad to wait until the end on that. I we'll, I we'll see. I'm so broken. I'm Dub. I'm here with Courtney. I'm here with Kevin. We're here with Tyler. <laughs> And I'm going to go in the shower and cry for the next hour. <laughs> I am so Jeez. broken right now. So dirty. Oh. Keep on geeking oh. on. Can't we'll wait see y'all later. Week. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>You've been listening to the latest episode of the iHeart Geek Show. Make sure you visit our website at www.iheartgeekshow.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you check us out on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And keep on geeking on to all of you geek rock stars.